he wants to stop treating women like garbage just for her. What have I just read? I found my own personal hell. It's not experimental, it's just incorrect. I just got in from Iceland last night, but guess what? I found out that this video didn't have an intro. Welcome to a vlog that I've never done before. Today, we are going to be attempting to read three, two, four, not three, not four, not 34, three, two, four unhinged romance books. I'm going to be sharing my opinions on them with you as always, just 100% honest opinions by no means wish to hurt, do harm. <laughs> That's why I got a bad. These are just my thoughts. This is gonna be good for me because I really wanna branch out my romance reading uh, life. And a lot of you guys said that you would have some fun watching this video. So let me run you down just maybe the first book I'm gonna be reading that you're gonna see me read first. And also what we're looking for, like how do I rank a rate a romance book. What am I looking for? What do I want to see in it? Okay, so we have three core tenets. My boyfriend also watched Tenet for the second time on the way back on the plane and watching that movie, half asleep, people are going backwards. What a time. <laughs> Truly in another dimension right now. What is the number one most important point, factor, facet to make a romance book good for Emma, to make me want to read it, to make me go, oh, that's cool, that's cute. Um, it's banter. It's goddamn banter. Have some banter. Bant with your partner. Bant with someone. Have some banter. Chat it up. Have some chemistry. Be flirtatious. Use good grammar, but more importantly, just be quick. Just be quick. Just be quipping. Language just does absolute wonders in the world. Um, but especially in romance books. If there's not good banter, if the dialogue between our two love interests just isn't there, does not inspire sparks or smiles or a little bit of brain work, the banter, okay? Just spar. Spar with words. Number two, okay, number two, pay close attention. I call it data. It stands for drama, angst, tension, and agony. Okay, give me a little sprinkle of agony in there. Now, those all sound pretty similar. I will agree they're all in the same family. They're related, but they're different individually. None of these things can be too amped up, ballooned into the realm of the ridiculous. Otherwise, it just becomes cringy and laughable. But when I think of angst, I'm thinking of the, the rain scene in Pride and Prejudice. When I'm thinking of agony, I'm thinking of agony. And when I'm thinking of tension, I'm thinking of Sexual tension. Okay, there was no other tension to be had. I'm not checking your tire pressure. What is the last tenet of a good romance novel? Uh, for me, it's just mediocre writing, okay? It doesn't have to be good writing. Newsflash, it doesn't have to be good writing to be a good romance book. It doesn't even have to be good writing to be a good book in general for me. I just want mediocre writing that can tell a story that I can read that's like coherent. That's all I'm asking from these books uh, is coherency. Did I get below 50% butchery of the English language? You'll have to wait and see, but that's really all I'm asking for is just don't slide all the way into bad writing, into typos and incorrect language because then I just, it's unreadable. Oh, hey. Does all that reading have you working up a sweat? That's why I'm so freaking happy to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Native. They are a deodorant company. I've been using Native's deodorant for a year and a half now. I haven't used anything else since I started using them. And this time I got to try their completely plastic-free scents. They're the same formula as their regular deodorant. They are made out of 90% post-consumer recycled paper. The texture is not sticky. It dries super quickly. They are aluminum-free, paraben-free, cruelty-free, and vegan. I chose the scents Charcoal. This one smells like the expensive cologne of someone you walk by in like the business class at the airport. Then I chose Warm Cider and Cinnamon because that just sounds like the coziest scent ever and perfect for autumn and Halloween. It does. It smells like apple pie. And then finally, I chose a bit more of a lighter scent with the Lilac and White Tea. Ugh, and this one smells very peaceful. Smells like a spa day. Three plastic free deodorants would be $39, but if you use my linking code, get them for $26. That is over 30% off. Also with my code, you can get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. Thank you so much to Native, and let's get back into the hard work of reading. And the first book I'm gonna be picking up, or you will see me picking up in this video, is Throttled by Lauren Asher. Why is this unhinged? Um, well, <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about like Ferrari's hinges coming off the season, but that's already 
pain. There's too much pain there. <laughs> it's too soon. It's too soon. Um, it's unhinged because this is an F1 Formula One romance. You will all be surprised to know, and no one more than myself, I'm shocked at myself that I've become an F1 a little bit of a fan um, this year. How did this come about? I think in like January or February, my partner was watching some videos on YouTube and I was like, hey, what's that? And uh, here we are. I now watch the races every Sunday. I'm now watching all four seasons of Drive to Survive. I now have F1 TV. Where does it end? <laughs> Might end with this book, honestly. I don't want to go any further than Throttled by Lauren Asher, but that's a spoiler. So Throttled. This is set in, in our world and we are following Ferrari, but they're not called Ferrari in here. They are called Bandini. This is a romance between Maya, who is the brother of Santiago, who in this case I believe is Carlos Sainz. I'm just giving it my best guess, but Carlos and um, what's his face? Charles are teammates. Leclerc is of course the love interest in here. It also starts with a playlist because I don't think I got to show you this in the next clip. Antisocial by Ed Sheeran and Travis Scott. Animals by Maroon 5. The first track on here is God's Plan by Drake, so without further ado, let it roll. It's about to be so fun trying to guess like who the rest of these people are. Having to read a race scene is just really not exciting. Like I pull a risky move, pushing on the brake a few seconds later than recommended for a curb. Thirty six pages through and I'm so sad because I Oh man, this is not it right now. They've just met for the first time at the F1 press conference. Right now, Noah is just like, he's irredeemably awful and nasty to the point where like, I do not care about him in any way, shape or form. It's just continued being so cringy. Like, what is this? Nothing makes a girl swoon quite like a guy dedicated to his gym regimen. But this guy is more likely to commit to his gym than to another girl. Um, am I gonna DNF this? Am I gonna DNF this? I got to page 86. Um, it's extremely quick to read, but look at all the little dog ears that I have to laugh with you about. Um, so far this book is absolutely not building up the three core points of me being able to enjoy a romance book. What was number one? Let's remember, good banter. So, so far, like, the book itself tells you that it has good banter. There's been two or three times now already where it's happened, where Maya, our main character, is like, I like guys with a quick wit, or he quipped, and Noah as well is like, oh, such great banter, like in his head, like he's writing it down. And I'm like, no, it's not, <laughs> it's not. Don't give me like mediocre flirting that's not even like quick or has a lot of chemistry. They'll just say like one snarky thing to each other or make a joke that's like not really that funny or witty. And then, <laughs> and then Noah will be like, ah, oh, such good banter. And I'm like, you can't just tell me you have good banter. Like as an author, you can't just slide in Ah, such amazing writing when it's just not there. The data is also not there, okay? There's not really any angst or tension. I mean, I'm in agony, but not, not the good kind of agony. It's just painful. As I said, Noah is just too much of um, a sleazy, nasty man. It's insufferable to read about him, the things that he is saying. Like, I'm not even gonna repeat them out loud because I just don't even want those words to pass through my mouth. And lastly, the mediocre writing. Um, it's just plain, it's just plain bad at this point. What are the sins we've committed so far? He's called her exotic because she's from Spain. It's stuff like our male lead telling us things like, I stop myself from harassing our main character because I have a cap of one sleazy move per day. It's really weird lines like, you can't Pinterest that. You can't Pinterest that. We've also discovered, um, my bad, Maya is not in journalism. She graduated with a communications degree. You graduate with a communications degree and you still don't have good banter. Come on. She is touring with her brother, Santiago, who um, is Carlos Sainz. And her thing is that she's starting a YouTube channel and she's vlogging the whole thing. So that's kind of her job right now is vlogging. So, you know, I'm relating to her, but as well, like she went from having like 50 subscribers and then all the F1 boys, like, advertised her channel and now she's like blown up and I'm like well if they want to do the same for me so when I say that I want 
good tension, good angst, and good uh, drama in books, there is a fine line in romance between it just going right over into cringe, and unfortunately that is what ha that is what's happening because in Noah's sections, it's split between our two protagonists. Um, he says, unlike me, who reeks of broodiness and bad memories, driving away from my demons week after week. I mean, you're not really driving away from them, you know, you're chasing them in a circle. Could have been a cooler metaphor, you know, you're just going around in this vicious cycle. Sundays are my favorite day of the week. Sundays are race days. Because who needs a church when I have a front row seat to heaven? Mm, okay. Okay, this one was probably the worst sin that they've committed so far, maybe. So Maya goes to a gala with her brother for all of the F1 people. We have the drivers, we have like management and sponsors and stuff like that. And she gets to meet Liam and we also meet Lewis Hamilton who drives from Mercedes. Anyway, so she meets them all and then she says, no wonder barely any women have jobs in the F1 industry. I doubt I'd be productive working around this hotness day in, day out. Yes. It's the unquenched thirstiness of women working around mediocre looking race car men that prevent women from having jobs in the racing industry. I'm on chapter nine. So um, we're gonna keep reading a little bit. We're currently at the Chinese Grand Prix. So let's read some more. I will get back to you soon. Keep me in your prayers. Beside it having really awkward and cringy one lines and stuff like that so far, like. He doesn't need to steal my thunder when he robs the whole damn storm. It just has awkward and like kind of wrong sentence structure. Um, for example, she doesn't put the lid on the blender and it explodes everywhere, but um, it's she says, it's all fun and games until I forget to put the cap on the blender, making contents splatter everywhere. Making contents splatter everywhere. Making contents, like that's just incredibly awkward. I know what you're saying, but like you could just say making the content splatter everywhere um because when you're talking about the smoothie like it's it's gonna be the content of the smoothie you don't have to say making contents splatter everywhere that is so incredibly you should have changed that should have changed that he used the wrong your i finished throttled and it was not up to speed for me this was not good can i say it i can say it this wasn't good i think when you have such an unlikable character that suddenly decides he's gonna change for maya he wants to stop treating women like garbage just for her isn't that nice it's taken way too far for me to be able to enjoy his character or root for them maya was just kind of there along for the ride in more ways than one just was not a fan of this book. I thought the writing was really awful. Not only was it really cringy, but it could have done with an editor. If this has an editor, I'm gonna feel a little bad. It did, I'm sorry. It just really takes away from the experience when there are sentences that are just straight up wrong. What happens is that Noah finally confesses his feelings for Maya and she's like, you know what? I know your reputation as a bit of a playboy and I don't want that. I want a serious relationship. And he's like, I can't do that. This happens while they're out on a date together and immediately when he gets home, even though he really likes Maya, he goes and sleeps with, I think it might just be one girl, but it might be a bunch of them. And then she's obviously really upset about that because she's like, you literally just asked me to be with you and now you're with other people. And then a couple weeks go by, he goes to therapy. He sees her again and he's like, hi, I've changed. They're together until the very end where they get married. There's one thing I hate in romance books. It is always the stupidly unnecessary epilogue. I will just, I'm just gonna stop reading romance epilogues because I can't, because you know what it is 90% of the time, marriage. I just don't understand why it all has to end in marriage. It doesn't, it doesn't have to. I don't care. I don't wanna read the mushy gushy like, we're together forever. And I made her her wedding dress garter thing out of the Spanish Grand Prix flag. No. I didn't need to read that. Maya's like, I don't want to tell my brother about us. We shouldn't tell him. It's just going to upset him. And that's like the whole main issue of the book is that they're just trying to keep their relationship private. But it did not feel like too much of an issue. You could have just told your brother you were dating his teammate. I feel like it's not that big of a deal because once they eventually do tell him, like he ends up being so chill about it. The writing um, was just incredibly cringy from start to finish. She says, Jesus take the wheel. He says, you may have called me God last night, but I'm the only one behind the wheel today. This book gave me really bad ick for kind of just both of them. I did not like them at all. They are watching Stranger Things together and it's a sad scene and she's crying and she's just really into the TV show and he's like, do you always cry during sad scenes? It is cute, endearing even, but I don't want her to cry over something not real. 
I don't want her to cry over something not real. Just bizarre little things like that. Express your emotions. You're sad over something? Freaking cry. Who cares? At the end of the day, Noah for Bandini or slash Ferrari wins the world championship. So <laughs> I don't think I'll be picking up any more in the like Dirty Air series, which I'm really sad about because I really, really wanted to like this. We moved on to the next book, which is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I wanted something a little bit more crazy, a little bit more unhinged. I pulled up the Goodreads page for Throttled and it has an average 3.88 star rating. I cannot. Who has rated why? I don't understand. However, I do want to see both what you guys say because I can see your reviews if some of you have read it. Um, as well as the general public. Someone said, I would sometimes feel awkward about the characters and their conversations. 100% Julia, I agree. It was just awkward. The dialogue was off. Like I said, the banter, missing. Okay, someone said this was so cute. No. Noah was unexpectedly spicy. There was spice, but like it wasn't well written. I didn't care and it just gave me the ick. It, someone said, who said this? I agree. Martina, thank you. She said, it had almost every cliche in the book, especially with Noah. He was the typical man whore with familial issues that did not want to settle. But that one girl, Maya, changed everything. I hate that trope. Okay, so overall, it seems like the people liked it, but there are a few people that I agree with. For my part, I'm going to give it two stars because I just... No. Am I considering reading the Lewis Hamilton book? No. 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 I did for a second, but I'm not going to do it to myself. That brings us to Verity by Colleen Hoover. I actually want to read the reviews about this one. This one was left as a comment on my video saying that if I was going to do Unhinged Romance, Verity 100% has to be on here. Like I mentioned, did I mention this? It's a romance thriller, so I am so intrigued what that even. I've never read a romance thriller before, but this has a whopping 1,095,550 ratings on Goodreads and it has an average 4.43. That's pretty good. Um, I've never read Colleen Hoover. I never thought I was going to read Colleen Hoover in my life, but here we are. This one, we follow a girl named Lowen. She is a struggling writer and the book opens with her um, witnessing a car crash or no, witnessing an accident. A man gets hit by a car and I believe he dies. She gets like his blood all over him, but thankfully there is this man named Jeremy also at the scene of the accident who witnesses it with her and he helps her out. It turns out that they were both heading to the same place because Lowen was going to a meeting to potentially get a new book deal. It turns out that Jeremy is the husband of the world, I guess world famous writer named Verity Crawford who has sold millions of books. She's a fantastic writer, but unfortunately Verity was in a car accident herself and she can no longer write her book. So they're trying to bring Lowen in to complete her series for her. Kind of like a Brandon Sanderson situation with um, Wheel of Time. Um, I wanna just see what people say. It gave me chills, okay? One of the best suspense books I read in a very long time. Someone said, I was horrified, I was disgusted, I loved it. Jesse, I hope, I hope that's me. Someone said, holy mother of God, what the hell did I just read? Um, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Uh, and then we have the other side of the spectrum. We have reviews that says this was straight up hilarious. The funniest creepy book ever written. Did I hear that people cried while reading it? I sure hope it was tears of laughter. Someone said it should really come with a warning. Don't start reading this at night if you want to sleep. Most of these just straight up say that it is disturbing, all consuming, dark, twisted, spooky, scary. I'm kind of interested to see where the romance comes into play because at the part I am now, I'm listening to this on audiobook by the way, um, and there's dual perspectives because we have Lowen who finally agrees to the deal even though Jeremy kind of pushes her into it. Um, there's a really weird fixation on Jeremy's hands. I've read so many sentences about this man's hands now, it's a little crazy. He's kind of like pressured her a little bit into taking the deal in a way. He also has a very tragic backstory other than just his wife being severely injured we don't really know what happened or like why she's incapacitated like she's still alive but she kind of just lays in bed all day and she doesn't really speak they had three children together as well very very me <laughs> verity and jeremy but both of their daughters died one died to like an allergic reaction 
when she was at a birthday party and the other daughter drowned in the lake. She's kind of suspicious of Jeremy, but she agrees to go spend a few days at his house and going through all of Verity's like um, notes and stuff for her upcoming novel so that she has enough information to finish the series. But while she's there, she discovers a different manuscript of Verity's that is like her autobiography. And she starts to read it and then we do get the split perspective of Verity, like meeting Jeremy, falling in love with Jeremy, um, already their relationship from her manuscript has a bunch of red flags on Jeremy's behalf. Um, Verity is definitely unhealthily like attached to Jeremy. She's very obsessive about him, can't be away from him at all. Verity begins writing because Jeremy leaves her for a little bit on a business trip, but when he gets back, he sees the manuscript. He like, he does, it is stealing. He steals the manuscript from her without her permission to read it and she's like give it back please give it back she's like frantic she doesn't want him to read what she's written um and he locks her out of the bathroom pushes her out of the bathroom and then reads her manuscript and like does not speak to her for 15 20 25 minutes while she is like frantically banging on the other side of the door um like begging him to give her back her work and he just won't and i'm like if someone read if someone read what i wrote without my permission the fact that she's like crying and screaming and like just don't, just don't read it. Jeremy, don't read it. I'm very passionate about this. Don't read, don't read their work. I've never gotten this much interaction on a Goodreads post when I updated that I was reading Verity. Someone said very excited for the roast. So I just really trust you guys and you guys always know what I'm gonna think of a book because like we have this symbiosis going on. Um, someone said rest in peace. Someone said step aside, Rilke, a new favorite author is on the horizon. Rest in peace, the time you're wasting. This book is literally on crack the whole time. Not really loving it so far. I'm about two hours and 20 minutes into the audiobook, but I'm gonna go listen to it some more because um, I hope, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big suspense thriller reader. I find them kind of boring and predictable, but we're gonna give it a shot, okay? I'm still gonna keep an open mind. About Verity. I am halfway through the book and I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it yet. I'm hating the romance. I'm hating the romance because I think it's just stupid. Like I think this should have just been left as a thriller because I'm actually, I'm way more enjoying the thriller half of this book than the romance. The romance half is like Lowen, our writer who is filling in for Verity is falling in love with Verity's husband, Jeremy, which probably isn't great considering he's still married with a wife in his house who is incapacitated. We don't know to what extent. They also have their son there. Things are happening which are making us question to what extent Verity is actually like chained to her bed. Um, Jeremy has said that she's not paralyzed, but for some reason she can't move, she can't speak. All she can do is chew her food and like move her eyes. Our writer Lowen has been getting really menacing vibes from her for now, I don't want to say no reason, but she's just like, oh my god, Verity's looking at me. However, the manuscript that Lowen has started to read of Verity's autobiography is so messed up. It is so messed up. There was a point where like my jaw dropped open just because I wasn't expecting, I just wasn't expecting the content of Verity's manuscript. It, uh, it deals with a lot and it's severely messed up. I actually, it's actually a topic that I find very interesting to be explored. It has to do with like motherhood and pregnancy and childbirth and having children. What Loman describes as a very troubled woman. She also calls Verity something that's just, I, I'm sorry, I laughed out loud because I just thought it was so bizarre. She calls Verity in the present who's like injured, you know, from the car wreck, she's in bed. She said that Verity is like an eggshell with no yolk. Sheesh. From Verity's manuscript, we're learning that Verity was like super obsessed with Jeremy. And when she found out that they were having kids, she was pretty panicked because she was like, Jeremy's gonna love our kids more than me. Um, and she doesn't want anything to take away from Jeremy's love for her. Um, but she also doesn't want children in general either. She has a pretty heavy obsession with how her body looks and how having kids is going to change her physical form. Um, and there's actually a lot, not, I don't want to say there's a lot of nuance here, but for me, those topics are very exciting, interesting, um, very important to me. Something I enjoy hearing about, especially in a case that is, I want to say as messed up as Verity's account of how having her children went down. I will say the writing so far is much better than Throttled by Lauren Asher. It reads a lot 
smoother, there's not, you know, typos. And I will say I'm intrigued by the spookiness. I am intrigued by the spookiness because Verity is supposed to not be able to move, right? But Loan has seen like upstairs when she's outside from Verity's room, like the curtain moving, the classic curtain move. We've also had instances where like Verity's nurse has been like, yo, I left her TV on, bye. Loan goes upstairs, the TV's off and the remote is suspiciously close to Verity. We also just had an incident where Crew, who's a suspicious little kid, I hate kids in horror books, they are the ones, they are the ones who've done it. He is withholding so much information from Lowen and he like, he's like, yeah, you know, I talked to my mom about this and Lowen is like, your mom doesn't talk. And Crew's like, and I'm like, just tell her. Just tell, does your mom talk, kid? He just screamed, Lowen runs upstairs. She finds that crew has been cut with a knife on his chin and it's like beside him, but Verity is still in bed. But later on when Lowen goes back to get the knife, the knife is gone. Right now, of course, the book is, is luring us into thinking that Verity is probably faking the whole thing, which would be on par for her very obsessive, like I want all of Jeremy's attention on me. Like would she go so far as to immobilize herself? to some extent, or at least pretend that she's injured so that Jeremy has to care for her. I'm 50% through, I'm not hating it, but the romance part is just a little bit stupid in my opinion. Like I just don't understand. Like from the manuscript, we have Verity and Jeremy and in the present we have Lowen and Jeremy. I'm assuming Jeremy might be the end culprit kind of puppet master of the whole situation who might just be a messed up dude. He is quite controlling. I'm on chapter 11 and I have a little bit left. There's a situation with Verity. It's been like a couple weeks now, um, but I'm getting almost to the end of it. Lowen has continued to read Verity's manuscript, but like, here's the thing. She never, I just feel like I'm questioning, like, why is the manuscript there? I feel like her husband, Verity's husband would have gone through her office, would have found the manuscript telling him that his wife is one of the most terrible people probably to exist ever but like she does have her own like psychology and reasons for things but he would have picked it up and read it and been like oh my gosh like he has no idea or according to Lowen, he doesn't what kind of person his wife was the kind who would try to kill her own children and who will do anything to get jeremy's attention to just be like the center of his world like she will literally do anything even potentially kill people i'm just like i think Lowen takes it maybe for granted or just takes it immediately that the manuscript is really Verity's. I'm like, Jeremy, Jeremy could have written this. Verity's husband, Verity's husband, Jeremy could have written this, put it here to make you turn against Verity. Um, I don't know why. Now Lowen and Jeremy are sleeping together. As for the romance part of this book, I've already talked about this. It's not, it's just what romance. When Lowen and Jeremy were on the couch smooching, Lowen swears that Verity was at the top of the stairs and Verity should not be able to walk, to move, to get up and about. And Jeremy is like, what are you talking about? Either we are following Lowen's like descent into madness. She's reading these manuscripts. She's getting all kinds of ideas. She swears that Verity is out to get her. She's like afraid, so afraid of this woman. She also sleepwalks. Lowen sleepwalks is like something she's had since she was little and one night she wakes up in Verity's bed next to Verity. But she's also convinced now that like Verity wants to kill her. Verity's out to get her. Even though Verity's like supposed to be just confined to bed. And it's still better than throttled, miles better than throttled, but I'm still like, I just don't really care. I'm really interested in a very stupid way. I'm interested to see like what the twist is going to be because I only have two hours left on the audiobook, but I just don't know where the story is going. I'm not finding it. I just don't really care. Chemistry between Lowen and Jeremy just is not there. And as well, Verity's manuscript is so full of so many sex scenes between Verity and her husband, Jeremy, because Verity is obsessed with Jeremy. But even Lowen remarks on it, like if I have to read one more like poorly written sex scene, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be out. And I'm like, me too, Colleen Hoover. Is this what you wanted? Because it's what you've done. Um, anyway, I'm gonna keep going with it, but I'm almost done. I'm hoping to finish this today. So you will hear my final thoughts on this absolutely wild romance. People who are saying it's like creepy and scary, it's really not. It is just kind of laughable right now. No, last theory. This is my last theory. Last theory, an hour and 54 minutes in. I don't think the girl, the girl in the bed who's supposed to be injured, I don't think that's even Verity. Like, does Verity even exist? Maybe it's just been a string of women. And like, 
the next one is gonna be his wife and the next one's gonna be his wife like maybe i don't know if it's giving me like house at the end of the street i don't know if anyone's seen that movie but um i feel like maybe it's that kind of situation where like maybe the original verity just doesn't even exist also the fact that her name is verity and it means truth is just sending off like alarm bells in my head because i'm like i maybe it's not even verity you know maybe he's hiding the truth he's hi he's hiding verity um and he just like gets people he just gets women to come to his house i don't know just the fact that people are saying the twist is the most outlandish thing you could think of i'm just anyway that's my last theory what have i just read finished verity by colleen hoover it's gonna be somewhere i don't know what side let's make it this side i finished it a couple of days ago i've been trying to collect my thoughts about it um, I also cannot decide for the life of me if I actually want bangs or if I don't want bangs and so I've just been cutting them like every couple of weeks and then deciding I don't want them anymore and then letting them grow and then it's just been the cycle so if someone could just comment just tell me I also did my nails for fall besides the point Verity by Colleen Hoover where the hell do I begin with this okay first and general thought I didn't think it was as bad as the people who say it's like complete trash say it is but I also definitely do not think it is anywhere near as good as the people who are obsessed with it and think it's like the greatest thing ever think that it is if that makes sense so I feel like I just have a weird middling opinion on Verity if I had to give this a star rating I think it would be maybe like two and a half. I think my opinion was also very affected because I listened to the audiobook for this one and I think if I was reading it myself I would just pick up on so many more things that don't flow but because I'm listening to someone's voice narrate the story and this one was split between two narrators which was nice when we had Verity's point of view and when we had Lowen's point of view that made it a lot nicer to listen to. On the whole not super impressed. I am gonna spoil. I am gonna spoil the whole mystery of this book so if you don't want to be spoiled skip. The romance? No. This is so not what I'm looking for in the romance and I think that's not really the book's fault. I think this book was more wanting to be a thriller, wanting to be a mystery suspense book, not really focused on the romance because the romance was weird. Every single scene of intimacy, every single sex scene, every single relationship scene it just made me completely uncomfortable and sometimes it is the point but specifically with the relationship between Lowen and Jeremy I did just not want to read about that at all no part of me wanted to I didn't feel any chemistry there this book alone I was solely just interested in like okay is Verity actually you know out of commission is she actually is she actually injured or is she faking it? And it turns out, spoilers, she was faking it um, the whole time. So every time that Lowen thought she saw Verity, it was real. However, the whole thing with the manuscript, <laughs> God, I feel like this book just has so many holes in it, you know? When you get to the ending, I really feel like this book has so many holes in it. You could have gone back and been like, why did this just not happen instead? Because essentially the manuscript that Lowen was reading was just, or maybe it was, I think, Colleen Hoover tries to make one too many twists of this, but it's essentially Verity, the author's antagonistic journaling exercises to help her as an author delve into the mind of the villains of her characters to become a better writer. So it's not actually Verity's own life, like the accounts of her murdering her children, being a complete obsessed psycho over Jeremy, trying to yeah murder her own children, all of that was just an exercise, or so she says. Because what happens is that Jeremy sees Verity moving around, like, oh my gosh, you can move and Verity's like oh no I can move with a twist. Lowen finally finally Lowen shows Jeremy the manuscript even though if that was me I would have shown the pl I would have shown everyone immediately I would have been like read this thing and what they do is they murder Verity together they just gang up on this woman and absolutely kill her because they think they're justified after reading the messed up things she has said and done in her manuscript and what ends up happening is that Lowen finds under the floorboards of Verity's room a letter explaining like why she was pretending to be injured the whole time and it was because Jeremy found the manuscript first like a couple years ago, read it, took it for reality just like Lowen did, thinks that his wife is a complete psycho, um, doesn't give his wife a chance to explain. He straps her into a car and drives her into a tree. And Verity's spending all of her time like pretending to be injured so that Jeremy doesn't kill her or that she doesn't go to jail. Just so many things with the plot that I was like, this doesn't really make a ton of sense. I will say I do appreciate the discussion on like writers and um, 
how to delve into another person's psyche, like what do you do, the stretch of the imagination, when does imagination cross over, um, what do you do as a writer to get into someone's headspace. I think those are interesting topics and I think overall it was an interesting premise. It's definitely a memorable book, I think I can say that. I'm someone who does not read thrillers really. I don't- I just find them kind of boring. I don't really read thrillers. I don't really read suspense or mystery too much and so I don't really have like, you know, a high caliber of like thriller book to compare this to so if I did I imagine it would be lower but on the romance scale, dead in the water. We've got romance number two down. Now it is my time to be frank with you. I have a confession to make because the third book for this video was supposed to be Hideaway by Penelope Douglas. I even have the physical copy of this one. This is one of her lesser known works, I guess. The only Penelope Douglas that I read was a DNF and that was Corrupt and Hideaway is kind of like a spin-off of Corrupt in that it follows some of the characters from the book Corrupt. Um, but Hideaway is about this guy named Kai and this girl named Banks and I started reading it and I could not, could not finish it. It was so bad that I couldn't- I got 150 pages in. The amount of uncomfortableness was really what got me in Corrupt um, because the characters that Penelope Douglas writes are just so- mm -mm. I could not keep going with this one so this one is out of the running for this video. Thankfully, I definitely have at least- I think I have one more unhinged romance for sure because this one was like also to deal with like murder and captives and just wacky stuff but this next one <laughs> this one i've just heard so many people talking about is gothicana by runix also because today is the first day of fall um this reading vlog is really taking me a long time to make but it is just perfect like look at this perfect i am gonna say i have not heard a single good thing about this book um it was making the rounds because it's like a dark academia a weird dark academia romance book about this girl who goes to what is the school called? Varen Moore. Her name is Corvina and she accepts her admission letter as a sign from the universe. The last thing she expects though is an olden secluded castle on top of a mountain riddled with secrets, deceit, and death. Um, and it's about the relationship I think between her and someone- is he a professor? He is. Okay, a part-time professor working on his thesis. It comes with a playlist. I mean, the last book with the playlist was not the best on here. However, we do have Florence and the Machine, so maybe it does bode well. It also starts with quotes from Edgar Allan Poe and Bram Stoker. I will not let you go into the unknown alone, and here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. A map? There's just these things riddled without the book too, so um, it looks interesting to say the least, but I have been warned that this is just... It is unhinged. It's a door that someone has taken the hinges out of. Okay, we're off to a bad start because there's a typo right here. We are each out own devil. So this is a second edition, so there shouldn't be those typos. I found my own personal hell. It's been a couple of weeks and I have read that much of Gothicana. Do you see this? If it'll focus? Yes. Do you see that? Let me say this perfectly, perfectly fits in the unhinged romance reading blog because this book is insane. Like, it's insane. So we talked about how it was about Corvina coming to Varenmore, which is like this weird school in a gothic castle. Um, and she gets there and she finds out there's all sorts of mysteries, like students keep jumping off of the roof and dying. Um, for some reason, like it seems like they're almost possessed. There's this weird graveyard, which is said to be home to like either people that students murdered from the town or the students that murdered the people from the town. So it's just wild. But there she meets Professor Deverell, who is the teacher of English language and literature, and they form a spicy, I don't, you know what? We're not gonna call it spicy because, well, it is, but it's just, this might take the cake for the worst book I've read all year. This map is absolutely cracked. The front lawn isn't even in front of the school. It's not the entrance, it's the entrance. So on every one of the dog-eared pages, there's either something grammatically incorrect, something is honestly blatantly wrong. It's not like a stylistic opinion, it's just wrong. Um, this is killing me to read. It's making me want to tear my eyeballs out. I will quit. 
I want to quit book two. <laughs> this book is making me want to quit book two. Exhibit A. This is the sentence. Didn't they investigate? She asked her new roommate, pulling out a drawer for her underwear. Not that she liked wearing them. Bras and Corvina were not friends. Having grown up the way she had, all alone, bras had seemed necessary only once in a while. So like, it wasn't- do you see how confusing and off that sentence is? That she pulled out a drawer for her underwear, not that she liked wearing them. But then it switches to talking about bras that it, she doesn't like wearing. So like, it doesn't even- that doesn't make any sense. Following the trail of sound, she walked on quiet footsteps. You don't- you don't walk on footsteps. You could say she walked on quiet feet. You don't walk on your footsteps. You make footsteps. These are all such huge sentence fragments. She's talking about how beautiful Mr. Deverell is. Beautiful in the way pain was beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And then this is a sentence all by itself. Haunting in the way only very few living things could be because it sent a shiver down the spine. What's it? There's absolutely no subject there. You've got fragments of sentences being passed off as real sentences. And it doesn't make any sense because what is haunting? What does? What's sending the shiver down my spine? This sentence, just hanging in the middle of the page, I just really like it. It was spooky and really weird. The day that Mr. Deverell, like they have, she has her first class with him, who is, like I said, the teacher of English language and literature. He comes into the room, introduces himself, tells them a little bit about the course. If any professor came into a lecture hall and started speaking like VAD does, I, I would be like, this man does not have a degree. No one would butcher the English language like this otherwise. You will refer to me as Mr. Deverell. I'll be teaching you language and literature this semester. That is one of the core subjects of this course, hence mandatory. What? That's a real sentence. There's no, no commas here. I'll be teaching you language and literature this semester. That is one of the core subjects of this course. Professor Deverell is technically still um, like a PhD candidate, he's working on his thesis um, and he's kind of just been slotted in to teach English language and literature um, which has happened before, I've had that happen, I've had a course taught by a PhD student anyway, someone asked him what his thesis is on um, two problems here, he says my thesis is the correlation and influence of music on literature through the ages First of all, you don't say my thesis is blah, blah, blah. You say my thesis is about blah, blah, blah. That's maybe a little bit nitpicky, but then second of all, that's way too broad. That's way too broad. My thesis is the correlation and influence of music on literature through the ages. It's going to have to be so much more refined than that, bad Deverell. You're going to have to go back. Go back to your academic counselor, get them to hone that in for you because that's way, that's way too broad. This one just made me gag. Are you scared? He asked. Should I be? She asked, her, raising her eyebrows slightly, even as a part of her wanted to break the eye contact and blush furiously at the singular masculine attention from a very masculine male. One time a girl got late to the class and he made her stand outside. She got late. She got late to the class. You don't get late. Late, the adjective, is not something you can have. Does she possess lateness? You could just say she arrived late and that would automatically make it better. Listen, listen, listen. Before I go any further, I am all, I'm literally all for butchering language, destroying language, dismantling language. Um, it's something we've built. It's something that deserves to be decreated as much as we've created it and i am 100 percent for experimental writing i adore experimental writing but let me tell you this it's not experimental it's just incorrect when you put a book out into the world when you write something especially something that you know is not experimental you know we know this isn't experimental this is supposed to be a dark academia gothic romance you have entered whether you know it or not, into an agreement with the English language. Its rules, its formulas, its structure, its grammar, its spelling, to say the very least. Especially when you are putting a book out into the world with your name attached to it, you are entering into an agreement with the language you're writing the book in. She quietly watched as he read, tapping the pen on the side, a pen that looking tiny in his large hands. A pen that looking tiny. I would not mind as much if like the story was good, if the romance was good, I really truly wouldn't. This is what the romance is like. Steer clear of me. You might be a luring siren, but I'm no ordinary sailor. I'm a mad pirate. Big time rush? No, big time ick. This one is my personal favorite. This is the sentence. The tarp was new, which meant it was recent. 
I actually have a fear of woods and heights for a long time. Well, if you have it in the present, a long time is in the past. So that doesn't make sense. So she gets into relationship with her professor, which is obviously forbidden. Also the fact that she has to ask, she literally asks on day one when she gets to the school because um, her dorm mate or her, you know, um, what's it called? Her roommate tells her best friend previously had a relationship with Mr. Deverell and a few months afterwards she jumped off the roof and so she's like steer clear of him and Corvina is like what we can't have relationships with professors what do you mean no of course you can't think free please dear god just use an adverb just use the adverb think freely think freely okay slide that adverb on there give me the adverb. He's obviously trying to tell them to think freely. He's trying to tell them to go above and beyond to like make it their own essay. And he says, think free. Fired immediately. Now I'm going to give you uh, my final thoughts on Gothicana uh, because it's done. It just feels really bad when you hand money over to be given a story that um, is very lazily put together. I'm not even talking plot wise because I think this was a cool idea. I would have enjoyed it. It's supposed to be, you know, a gothic dark academia romance and while it does hit on all of like the trendy tagline, you get a product that is so not finished that should not be for sale when it's so um, grievously entombed in errors and just basic typos. Um, this could have done with such a big editing job, like such a big editing job. I would be embarrassed to turn in something like this um, and I think it's just worse when you are putting this out for your readers to buy. Like this is a big hefty book um, that people are going to spend money on, especially if you're advertising it, but you are advertising um, an unfinished product. This is not a finished book. There are typos galore. Um, I stopped dog earring, but as you can see, every single one of these is um, not even not a subjective flaw, but an objective mistake. We have the thought of an unknown voice invading her consciousness again and bringing terrible sense with them. Voice is singular, them is plural. Taking in his masculine face. Okay, the masculine thing, like it just, it can it just stop? Can I ask for that for Christmas? We finally find out that the reason people are jumping off the roof at the school is because the student who is our main character's roommate, her name is Jade, she was actually part of like the old Slayer legend, a descendant of the Slayers, and she's been killing people off and I don't know. Um, to be honest, I really stopped caring about anything and everything that was going on in this. The romance was just icky once again, so yeah, this gets a one star rating for me. Honestly, props to myself that I finished it because this was, um, this was a nightmare for my soul. Like I did with a few other of these ones, I just want to look up the Goodreads ratings. Okay, Gothicana. What do we have? I quit. 4.11? Let's read some reviews um, to see if anyone has the same opinions as me. This book is clearly just here for the aesthetics and angsty romance on a dark academia backdrop or an attempt at one. Yes, actually, absolutely. Seemed like the author hadn't even bothered to read it through, so why should I? Yes. What the hell did I just read? Yeah, oh, the vibes were out of this world. Warning, don't read it in the dark at night. If you want to read Gothicana, <laughs> turn all the lights off first. <laughs> so now I'm going to give you my definitive rankings of the books that I read. Uh, coming in at the worst, no surprise, it's Gothicana. Well, actually, I feel like this still would have ranked lower than Hideaway, which I've already unhauled, um, just because I Hideaway still had proper spelling and no typos and anything like that. So then we have Hideaway by Penelope Douglas, which I didn't even manage to finish, so that says all you need to know. And then I think I'll still rate Throttled in the number two position. This was not very good. I gave this two stars, but definitely nowhere as near as bad as Gothicana. Um, I just didn't really particularly like the characters. I didn't feel anything for them. The romance was incredibly cringy. So was the writing. Um, the pacing of this was very repetitive and um, the toxicity that already exists in a lot of like sports i don't know sport toxicity it's a thing um it was taken up to a level in a throttle that was just ridiculous and laughable especially when we get the perspective of noah who is our driver and it was just like unreadable almost to me so that was that one and then surprisingly number one which like still wasn't even enjoyable for me was verity by colleen hoover just because this was like a concise coherent story like you can tell like this is 
um, a novel. It wasn't a great one, but it was a story. It did pique my interest at times. It did shock me, um, and it had writing that was readable. Please let me know if you would like to see this again. I would be honored to hopefully find some romance books that I enjoy. So yes, thank you again to Native for sponsoring today's video because these books made me sweat and not in a good way. They just... <laughs> Sweat with anger a little bit, you know, the angry sweats is that a thing. I'm gonna go get some sleep, so I hope you are well rested, having a great day, reading some good books, and like I said, please let me know what books you'd like to see me read for the next unhinged romance vlog. So, until then, ciao.